Hello, I'm Dr. Randall Seacrest, your host for eOrthopod TV. Today I have with me Dr. Nitin Bhatia. Dr. Bhatia is a spine surgeon who is the chief of spine surgery at University of California, Irvine. Dr. Bhatia did his undergraduate training at Stanford. He then went on to Baylor College of Medicine where he completed his MD degree. From there, he did orthopedic surgery training at UCLA. From there, he finished a, a spine fellowship at the University of Miami. Today, he practices complex spine surgery at University of California, Irvine. Good day, Dr. Bhatia. Thank you for having me. Dr. Bhatia, to, today what I would like to discuss is, is sort of a new buzzword in, in all of orthopedics, and, and now it's sort of taken hold in spine. And that's this whole concept of minimally invasive surgery. Um, three big words, what do they mean? Well, you're right. Minimally invasive surgery has become this kind of catchphrase that's really affecting all of orthopedics now. We see minimally invasive uh, joint replacement, minimally invasive uh, shoulder and knee surgeries we've had for years in regards to arthroscopy, and now we see minimally invasive spine surgery, especially in the low back or lumbar spine, becoming more and more popular among the physicians who are trained to do it. And so, so when we say minimally invasive, are we talking about surgery that uses TVs or endoscopes or, or different ways to visualize? Are we just talking about smaller incisions? Are we talking about smaller surgeries? Well, we're really talking about smaller incisions with less muscle damage, but when we do smaller incisions, we still have to get the exact same work done. There's no reason to have a smaller incision and less muscle damage if the job that we're there to do doesn't, doesn't get fixed. And, and I do a lot of minimally invasive surgery, but not all patients would benefit from it. And we have to make sure that we get the patients better, number one. And then if we can do it in a minimally invasive fashion, great. If we can't, we have to be willing to accept that and get the patients better, period. So the surgery essentially remains the same, but it's a new technique to get to the spine and visualize things through a smaller incision using either endoscopes, cameras, or microscopes. Well, and, and tell me this. I mean... It's great to do, do smaller incisions, but as you said, you know, if you're not getting the job done, then uh, it doesn't do you much good. What, what are the advantages of minimally invasive surgery? Where, where's the trade-off? Well, for the patients and problems that qualify, the advantage is that not only do you have a smaller skin incision, which cosmetically is fine, but honestly, cosmetics, cosmesis isn't top of my priority list when I'm thinking about a surgery. It can cause less muscle damage and less muscle denervation, which can, at least in the short term, allow a faster recovery, faster return to activities than, say, a traditional open surgery that involves a longer incision. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I, th I think that's definitely a, you know, we saw that with knee surgery, as you said, the minute we started using arthroscopy and could not make these big incisions in the knee, um, the patients got better faster. Right. But I think the thing we probably didn't understand was, was in the more normal tissue you damage, it never is normal again. Right. And, and this, this muscle tissue in the back, we used to just do these operations where we opened the back and we, we thought we were just moving the muscles out of the way. We killed a lot of muscle. And if you look at the MRI scans now, what you see is scar tissue replace that muscle. It does not grow back. So there's no sense, I don't, I don't think there's any sense damaging that muscle if we don't have to. That's right. And we do know, you know, as I mentioned, some people need the open surgery. We need to move that muscle. And the muscle goes back to the middle but there's scar tissue that forms with it, and the nerves that innervate that muscle are somewhat injured, so it never functions quite normally again. Now, fortunately for most patients, it doesn't become a long-term problem, but if we can avoid those theoretical issues, fantastic. Now, what has led to our, our doing this minimally invasive uh, surgery? And I think I know at least some of the answers. You know, used to, we didn't have fiber optics, so we right. couldn't, couldn't ever watch anything on the TV. But we're a new generation of surgeons. I mean, I'm more used to doing an operation watching somewhere else than looking at where I'm working now. Um, it's the Nintendo generation, isn't it? It, it really is. You know, we, uh, the younger generation of surgeons has essentially grown up not only playing Nintendo in the video games, but also training with arthroscopy and minimally invasive knee and shoulder surgery. So we're very used to using tiny incisions working through a, a camera, working through a microscope, and being able to perform the same kinds of surgeries. Nowadays, in fact, if you told a surgeon, why don't you do an open min partial meniscectomy, which is a surgery of the knee, 
they would have a hard time. But if you do it through an incision that big and an arthroscope, any orthopedic surgeon should be able to do that well. Yeah, that's true. So now we can translate those technologies and our experience and skill with it as orthopedic surgeons into the spine. You know, it, it's interesting because I do think that it requires a different way of visualizing the problem. Used to, you just sort of made an incision, you looked at what you were doing, right. like you're working on the car or whatever. Doing it minimally invasive, you really have to have a visual image in your head of what you're trying to accomplish, and you're doing that um, not looking at it. Right. Actually, and because of those reasons, minimally invasive surgery is technically harder than open surgery. Yes, I agree. If you open it up and you're looking at everything, it's actually much easier for a surgeon. But when we do it minimally invasive, you only see usually part of the anatomy, so you have to be very comfortable with the anatomy. You have to be an experienced surgeon. And sometimes with some of the procedures we do, we don't even see the anatomy at all. We're using percutaneous incisions and using either computer guidance or fluoroscopy, which is x-ray in the operating room, to see what we're doing. Yeah, I think it's been a major advance, and I think that you're right. It's a whole different way of trying to accomplish the same thing than we were doing 20 years ago. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about the low back, especially the low back, because I think that's where it's really taken hold in terms of minimally invasive surgery. What sort of things are we doing now in the lumbar spine minimally invasive rather than the traditional way? Well, the, uh, there's a variety of procedures we can now do minimally invasively. And, and again, I want to reiterate that we want to make sure that we're getting the job done if we do it minimally invasive. One of the classic procedures that's probably been in the longest with minimally invasive techniques is uh, discectomy, where we can go in and remove a herniated disc that's pushing on a nerve. It's quite a simple procedure to do uh, through a minimally invasive approach. It only in, involves kind of uh, almost a half inch incision. That has now progressed into being able to do more and more significant surgeries, even fusions and longer fusions, one level, two level, and even sometimes three level fusions through small one inch incisions in the back. And what do you see as the advantage of those? I mean, other than the tissue destruction, do you feel like we're getting better results with the minimally invasive surgery? I know theoretically we think we are. Are we seeing that now? Well, I think the results from the surgery itself are probably equivalent as long as we get the job done, whether it's open or minimally invasive. So I think the, the pain relief from the surgery in, uh, should be very good and very reliable. But the real advantage is how quickly are people back up on their feet? How quickly are they leaving the hospital? How quickly are they able to get back to their normal activity? And how much of that muscle are we sparing and avoiding scar tissue formation? In, in, in your career, what minimally invasive procedure have you seen that has really dramatically changed what you did, let's say, six years ago? I'll tell you, one of the, one of the procedures is the minimally invasive fusion now. Uh, some patients still, we have to do the open fusion where you make a, a two or three inch incision. I tend to use fairly small incisions anyways. But now with the minimally invasive fusion for patients who say have a spondylolisthesis, which is a slipping vertebra, and who do need a fusion, we can really open up the space for the nerves through a minimally invasive approach and then place the fusion material and the screws and rods through these small surgeries. One of the really nice advantages is it doesn't disrupt the levels above and below the area we're operating on and doesn't disrupt the muscles in the middle. So I do think their pain is somewhat less and they probably get out of the hospital a little sooner than otherwise. It's been very exciting to see how good the results have been in our hands with this technique. Well, and, and I understand as the, ch as the chief of spine surgery at University of California, Irvine, you're heavily involved in research as well. Is any of your research in this area of minimally invasive surgery? It sure is. And one of the things that we really want to do is see what kinds of new techniques can we bring to surgery, whether open or especially minimally invasive, to improve our results. Are there things we can do to make the incisions even smaller and reconstruct the spine even better? And so a lot of the research we're doing now is really focused on this minimally invasive surgery. And if you could give us sort of a preview of what we're going to see in the next five years, what do you think is on the, on the horizon? I think you're going to see more and more of the fusions and being done percutaneously 
or even with screws going in just through small stab wounds in the skin, I think you're going to see less and less of the big five and six inch incisions. Um, and I think you'll probably see surgery in sp and spine surgery trending towards having shorter hospital stays and even possibly going home with just one night stay. So you think that we're going to see um, less and less intense hospitalizations and I'm assuming that that's going to probably drop the cost of hospitalizations and maybe even the cost of spine surgery in general. I think you're exactly right. Well, we could definitely use some of that. Yep. Any other comments or anything about minimally invasive? If, if I'm a patient trying to decide whether to have the traditional approach or minimally invasive, um, how do I make that decision? Is, is minimally invasive ready for prime time, or is this something that only people such as yourself who are experimenters, researchers doing? Well, right now, there's only a small percentage of surgeons who are really doing minimally invasive surgery. In my community, where there are very good spine surgeons, uh, there are less than a handful of us, I can't think of any besides myself, who do this on a very regular basis. But the real key is we don't want to get stuck on saying we have to do it minimally invasive. We want to make sure we get the job done. And I have patients who come to me all the time and say, I want this procedure done minimally invasive, and I tell them, no, I won't do it because I don't think you'll get a great result from it. I think your result will be better if we do it with an open technique for this reason and this reason. And I think that's really important for the patient and the physician to work together to look at the options for treatment and decide what's going to get the best long-term outcome. And I think from what you're saying is that if you're, if you're seeing a surgeon that you're comfortable with, and this surgeon has not been trained in minimally invasive techniques, he may still be an excellent surgeon, exactly. and he may get excellent results, and there may not be any compelling reason for you to seek out a minimally invasive solution necessarily. I agree with that 100%. Any other comments? Anything else we can tell people about this new technology that's driving minimally invasive surgery? Well, I think the next few years are going to be very exciting. I think as our technology improves and we continue to take some of the lessons we've learned from other parts of orthopedics, You'll see it being applied more and more to the spine. Well, thanks. Good information. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching today. If you have questions about the topic that we discussed today or any orthopedic topic, be sure to visit eorthopod.com. And if you're an orthopedic surgeon or healthcare provider interested in participating as a guest on eOrthopod TV, you'll also find instructions on how to apply to become a guest on eOrthopod TV. Thanks for watching. Music